Hello everyone. This is another day of bones and skeletons at the Manchar at home. And today we are making your own controllable skeletal hand. Now on the inside, each finger and its bones has its own controls and string tendons. I want to show you how to make it. Now, step one. What you're going to need is a piece of cardboard. I cut up a piece from an old box. And what I'm gonna do with it is I cut out a giant hand. Now, this hand is a lot bigger than mine. You want big, broad, square fingers for your hand. And it extends down into my arm too. Now, once you have your cardboard hand cut out, we need to add some joints and bones to it. The joints are where your bones meet each other. And then your hand, you can see the joints because it's where your fingers bend. At your big knuckles, your small knuckles, and your tiny knuckles at the end too. Now, to allow our cardboard fingers to bend, I'm gonna score at each joint or knuckle. To do that, I'm gonna open up my scissors and I'm gonna make a small cut through the top layer of the cardboard this will allow it to bend really easily. So I just did my big knuckles right there. And then the next place I'm going to cut are my small knuckles. And then finally I'll be able to cut my tiny knuckle in the very tip too. Now, once you have the knuckles in, the next thing you're going to do is add some bones. So I'm going to draw in my bones right here. I'll start at the top and see, oh, color the extra space there so it's nice and black. And I'm gonna draw all 27 hands of my, 27 bones of my hand. Now you have your bones and your bendable joints. Bend your fingers, make sure those joints where you score the cardboard or bending. You may have to trim them a bit. And now it's time to work on the inside of that hand. Your bones are controlled by the tendons that are attached to your muscles that help you move those bones back and forth. Now in your hands, your tendons have sheaths that they move through to help control things back and forth. And what we're going to do next is add sheaths to each tendon sheaths to each of those bones and then add a tendon through it. For the sheaves, we're going to use a straw, and for the tendon, we're going to use a string. Now, it's going to take a lot of force to move the bones in your hand and your cardboard hand. So you want to use a really strong tape. I found the strongest tape in my house. You can also use hot glue if you have that at home too. What I did is I'm going to trim a short piece of straw, and I'm going to tape that down inside in between each joint on my cardboard finger. So each finger is gonna have three small pieces of straw taped down. I'm gonna push really hard on the edges there. I don't want that tape to give up. And, the, oh, your thumb, by the way, though, your thumb only has two joints in it, so it will only have two bones right there. But each finger will have three. And then your hand bones continue down to your palm. So we're gonna add a third tendon and tendon sheath right in there. Then I'm going to tape that to the palm right there. Now, once I have this all taped down, I'm then going to add a string. I'm going to take my string and I'm going to slide it through that tendon shaft and then through each of the little tendon sheaths right there. all the way to the very end of my pinky finger here, because I can bend my pinky joint. And once it gets to the other side, I'm gonna take a piece of tape, and I'm gonna tape it down to my fingertip. So extra strong tape, really squeeze it down. And then to test it, I can pull on the string, and I can bend my pinky finger. Now that middle joint wasn't up. It just needs a little bit of trimming so we can bend right. And there's my bendable pinky finger. Now, watch as I do that to all the other fingers on my hand.
Now, you've added your tendons as strings, you've added your sheaths as the straws, and you have all your bones on the other side. Our very last steps we need to do is add some controls. We're gonna need to add a handhold and then individual finger holds for each of the tendon strings. Now, let me show you how. For the handhold, you're gonna take a rectangle of cardboard, stretch it out so it's nice and flexible, and you're gonna wrap that around your hand so that just your fingers and palm fit inside, not your thumb, that would be on the outside. You're gonna tape that together, and then you're gonna take that loop of cardboard you've made, and you're going to tape it onto the base of your arm. That way, your hand will be able to slide inside of there. And then, to control each string, you're gonna make a ring. To do that, take a long strip of cardboard, stretch and bend it so it's flexible, and I'm gonna cut a piece off, wrap it around my, one of my fingers, I'm gonna make my own cardboard ring for one of my fingers. There we go. Tape that on right there. And then what I'm going to do is slide my control hand into my mechanical hand. I'm gonna put, this would be my pinky control right here. And I'm gonna slide the string through there at the other end. And I'm gonna tie it to that ring, but before I tie it, I want it as tight as it's going to need to be to curl my pinky finger down when I curled this finger. So right about there for this one. I'm gonna tie it in a knot. And I have my first control for my pinky finger. Let me test it. Hand in. Now, let me do that for the other fingers too. And we did it. We just made a mechanical hand using levels and pulleys, and your body does the same thing. It has bones, joints, tendons, and ligaments, all connecting your muscles to your bones, allowing you to be a mechanical human. Now, we're gonna be moving on to animal bones tomorrow. We have a live webinar you can join us in, and we're gonna be talking with Dr. Jerry De Silva. He's gonna be back sharing a huge variety of animal bones what they have in common and what's different about them from one animal to another. So bring all your bone and skeletal questions tomorrow to the Monshire at home.